This is the first lesson talking about arrays. Working with arrays is something really new and different. When you declare an array, it gives you the ability to work with large sets of data in an indexed way. You can declare very many variables all at one time. So let's motivate why you would want to use arrays. So here's the problem. How can a rancher easily catalog all of his cattle? So he wants to keep a inventory of his cattle. Each one of them has a name. Well, one way is simply name them all. String, Bessie, String, Mr. Tongue, String, Miss Fancy, String, Jumper, and so forth and so on. And if you've got 60 animals, then you've got 60 lines of code just to declare the variables. Well, is there a better way? Yes, of course there is. What we're going to do is declaring a const short of size 60, then I'll declare a whole array of strings. So in one statement, I've declared 60 variables of type string, and I'm going to call that collection of variables my herd. Looking at the syntax for declaring arrays, you have a base type, the name of the array, and then the number of cells or elements or boxes or whatever you want to call them. Without the square brackets and this number, then you would simply be declaring something of you know, an individual item of that type. So if I were to say base type of short and my array is going to be called Bob, if I stop there, then I've got nothing but a single element of type short including these brackets and putting a number in there, then I have 15 of them. Now the thing that you must understand about allocation of array memory is that all of the elements are in contiguous memory. And in the next slide we'll show you how we visualize that and it will help you to keep track of just how arrays are working. So we've got several examples here. We've got an array called student numbers of size 50, base type int. Then another array of student grades, again 50 uh, elements in the array, base type float. Then I've got an array of strings of type 50. I'm going to declare a constant, initialize to 2, and I'll have an array called my friends names, which is a base type string of size 2. Those are the only friends that I've got. Why in the world would you declare, and I've done this several times now, why would you declare a constant just for the size of an array? Well, number one, the size that an array is declared must be either a literal constant, like the number 2 or 5 or 86, or a constant, a declared constant. In other words, it has to be known at compile time. Furthermore, quite often, if you're going to declare one array of that size, you're going to declare more than one array of that size. So rather than trying to keep track of multiple arrays of the same size, it's best just to declare a constant and declare it of that constant size. Furthermore, if you're going to change that size sometime in the future, you can change it in one place and one place only and all those arrays will change. All the references all of the traversals, everything will change. You'll see in the future just how, how nice that is. Okay, so this is how we usually visualize arrays. And this brings up a very, very important point, and that is that arrays are indexed from 0 through max minus 1. So in this case, suppose that we're doing some sort of engineering example program where uh, we have some empirical data that we're going to record, some deflection readings. Perhaps we're putting some sort of force to a steel beam and measuring how much the steel beam bends. I set up a constant, sample size 340. That's how many readings I'm going to be taking. I declare an array called deflection readings of base type float. And there are sample size. Now what does that mean? That means that you've got 340 of them. That's true but they are indexed from 0 through 339. That's max minus 1. How do we access the individual cells? What we do is we're going to name the array and put the, the index 
of the particular cell in square brackets. Now you must be sure to understand that this is different from a declaration. If you look at the declaration, it's base type, float, and then the name, and then the size. That's a declaration. This is an access. It's just the array name, a particular cell, and then in this case, I'm going to assign to it. I'm going to assign 45.1 to the zeroth element, which is the, actually the first element. So to implement this, we change that. Second line of code, I'm going to set the value of the fifth element, which has index 4. That's this guy right here. It's the fifth. We're going to change that to 12.1. Bing, there we go. I want to output the seventh element, which is index 6 of deflection readings. So I'm going to output this guy right here. Some access mistakes. Now this is a very, very important point to be made. Here I have declared, again, size is 340. My array, deflection readings, is of size 340, meaning what? They are indexed 0 to 339. Now, if I try to access deflection readings 340, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to access memory that was not allocated to me. Bad news. Why is it so bad? First of all, this is called walking off of the array. That memory, it does exist, but it is not yours. It doesn't belong to your program. It may be somebody else's. It may be another program of yours, and worse than anything, it could be your operating system. Now, if you're simply trying to read it out, that's one thing. But suppose you try to write to that memory. That could be disastrous. All right. Can you initialize arrays? Yes, absolutely you can. You're going to initialize it with a list. So let's suppose that size is declared as 5. I'm going to declare an array, appropriately named array, but not very cleverly of size size, another cleverly named variable, I will assign to it a list, which is designated by the curly braces, an enclosed common delimited list of values, 7, 2, 4, 5, and 1. And the result is an array of five elements, base type int, and their values, initial values, are 7, 2, 4, 5, and 1. Incidentally, if you do not initialize using a list like this, then you get whatever happens to be in memory at the time. Here's another way. I can initialize to the single item list 0. And what that will do is it will zero out every item. And in fact, I can initialize an array to a shortened list, and any unspecified elements in the array are going to be zeroed out. So in this case, the zeroth element is 9, the oneth element is 1, and there's one more way that we can initialize an array, and we can do that with empty braces here. You might think, well, how can, how can that be? You're not stating the size of the array to begin with, but the compiler sees that you want three elements in the array, and therefore it will size the array to be three and give the initial values, in this case, five, two, and four. There are some things that you cannot do with an array. Number one, you cannot return an array from a function through the return statement. Now, you can pass arrays to functions and have them come back changed. We'll describe that in the next lesson. But you cannot return an array from a function like you return an int or a float or a character or whatever. Secondly, you can't output an array like you do any other variable. Nope, don't try that. It's bad news. It won't work. You can't read into an array like you can some other variables. Nope, don't do that either. It's bad. It's bad. It will not compile. Now, those are the very basics of arrays. There's still an awful lot more to learn. We're going to see how we can pass arrays to functions and how we have a new kind of function parameter called an array parameter. It's very, very much like pass by reference.